Hello bookish people, it is October 1st and that can only mean one thing. It's Victober! Please go check out the host videos. They have excellent videos. They all have wonderful YouTube channels. I highly recommend all of them. In addition to the challenges set by the host this year, I had some personal Victober goals that I had set for myself. Um, first of all, I've had very uh, Gaskell-oriented reading year after doing Austin as my author focus last year. This year I had focused on Gaskell. Um, so I definitely wanted to, the novels of hers that I have not gotten to yet this year are on my TBR. You'll see them. You'll see a lot of Gaskell because she is my personal focus this year. Also, I had wanted to um, make sure that for Victober I included a couple of other authors. So Dickens, for one. Can't have a Victober without Dickens. I mean, you can, but I didn't want to. Um, I also wanted to have incorporate some Trollope in my, I have not read any Trollope, but some of my really good friends love Trollope, and I feel like um, as someone who loves Victorian literature, Trollope would be a good fit for me. So just someone I really wanted to read and thought would be great to um, pick up in that Victober. And lastly, Thomas Hardy, which I had said last year I was going to pick up a Hardy novel, didn't do it. Um, Thomas Hardy and I had a rocky relationship when I was in high school, and I've not touched him since. But that's been a few years ago now, and I'm ready to give that him a, a second try. He may not be for me. I might love him. We'll see. But I definitely would incorporate those three authors into my Victober this year. For Kate, Katie's challenge, it is to read a book that is either less than 250 pages or one that is over 500 pages. And of course, I am doing both. So, um, for under 250 pages, I have chosen um, Elizabeth Gaskell's Cousin Phyllis. I can't really see it well. I'm sorry. Um, so, Cousin Phyllis clocks right in at 244, so just making it under that cut, but um, I'm looking forward to trying some more. I read Cranford in the past. I'm looking forward to trying some more of Gaskell's short stories. I love her as an author. On the larger side of this challenge, I have chosen to go with another Gaskell, and that would be Wives and Daughters. This Gaskell clocks in at close 649, so definitely over the 500 page mark. This one will be a reread for me. I love Wives and Daughters though. It's been several years since I've revisited this beloved story, and I'm so looking forward to getting back into it. It should be wonderful. I'm hoping it lives up to all my memories. Um, I really, really love this one. Anza's challenge is to read a book by a Victorian female author. So once again, we have Gaskell with Sylvia's Lovers. This is the only Gaskell novel, like full novel, that I have not yet read. And so it is bittersweet to be finally picking this one up because I won't have any more Gaskell to discover other than her short stories. But I'm also excited. I'm excited to have finally all have read all of Gaskell's works. Um, I understand that this one's a little harder to get through just because the dialects that she writes in, um, but I'm really, really excited to try it. Hoping that it's really good. There's a bonus challenge with Ange, and her it is to read a author, a Victorian female author, who is new to you. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to um, also read Mary Elizabeth Braddon's novel, Lady Audley's Secret. Uh, I ordered it, it has not arrived yet, and I ordered it like a month ago, it's been on back order. It says it will be here by the middle of the month, and if that is the case, I will definitely try to pick that one up too. I'm excited to read this Victorian sensation novel um, that I've heard so much about. Next up is Kate's challenge, and that is to reread a Victorian novel. And this is where my Dickens comes into play, because I am picking back up Great Expectations. Um, this was not my original plan. I have actually reworked my TBR a couple of times. A friend of mine who's only 15 years old has had a little bit of a rocky relationship with Dickens, but I love him so much. And so I sort of suggested that if she's struggling getting through Dickens, we should buddy read one. And this is the one she picked. Um, and I have no problem with that whatsoever because this was my first Dickens and I love it so, so much. So revisiting this one is going to be such a highlight of my Victober, I have no doubt. And last but not least is Lucy's challenge, and that is to read an underrated Victorian classic published in the same year as your favorite Victorian novel, which most of my favorite books are Victorian. 
Um, so that was a little difficult. I sort of narrowed it down to like my three favorite um, Victorian books and picked from there. <laughs> um, so I actually ended up calling North and South my favorite. Um, and it was published in 1855. And on Goodreads, it has 130,000 ratings. So it's a relatively well-known Victorian classic, um, one that I personally love very much. And also published in the same year, 1855, is Anthony Trollope's The Warden. So here's where I'm sneaking some Trollope into my challenges. Um, the, the Warden is the first Barchester um, book. So my very first Trollope, I'm starting with I don't know if it's the right series to start with, if I just start with Pallister instead, but I'm choosing this one. It's one that I have on digital copy, and I'm really looking forward to reading my first trollop. Last but not least is a group challenge, and that is to read by candlelight, which is so very warm and Victorian. Um, so <laughs> to read by candlelight, I've actually picked a book that I'm going to read by candlelight, uh, and that is Emily Bronte's Poems. I bought this book last year when Lucy the Reader did a Bronte themed challenge and I did not get on very well with Emily Bronte's poems. I've tried it twice, I've DNF'd it both times. However, when I saw this candlelight challenge, I thought, you know what, maybe reading a couple of poems every night by candlelight would be a good way to get through this. So I'm going to try it again. And if I don't get through it in October, I'm planning to give this one away because if the third time is not the charm, then I'm done. Um, I'm not a poetry lover to to be honest, um, and I know that's terrible, and I love the Bronte's writings. I think they're all talented, um, but poetry is just, I struggle with it so much. It's just not for me, so, but I am gonna give it another go, so wish me luck. <laughs> now the group read-alongs are Oscar Wilde, which I am there for. So I have the importance, of, well, I had the importance of being earnest in several other plays, but not a woman of no importance, hence now I have two. But I am really excited to revisit um, the importance of being earnest. It is one of my favorite movies too. Just one of, if you just want to smile and laugh, popping in the importance of being earnest with Colin Firth is just a, like an absolute win for me every single time. Revisiting the play would be such, such a fun idea. And then I'm really excited to read some of his other plays that I've not gotten to as well. You'll notice that Hardy did not make it onto any of my challenges. I couldn't figure out how to fit him in. That being the case, I am going to go ahead and try to put in at the end of that TBR, Far From the Madding Crowd. Um, it's one that I have read in the past, but I'm going to give it a go again and see if I like it better now. So definitely making this a priority in my October, even though it doesn't fit the challenges. Um, if I have time um, with all of that, and we will see. We will see. I have three more Gaskells on my shelf that I just, I haven't read yet this year, even though it's been a Gaskell themed year for me. Um, so I pulled them off thinking, well, if I can squeeze them in, I'm definitely going for it. And that would be Cranford, Gaskell's biography of Charlotte Bronte. And last but not least, I have this one, The Gothic Tales. That is my TBR. I'm really hoping to get through it all this year. I love Victober. I love it very much. I've enjoyed seeing so many Victober videos already posted this year, and I am just really looking forward to a full month celebrating Victorian literature. I know lots of us read Victorian literature all throughout the year, but social media just comes alive in October. It's sort of a festive um, Victober. Victorian focus and I love it. So I'm really looking forward to this month of reading and I will talk to you all in another time.